Right, guys. So yesterday, I can't tell you enough like how stinking impressed I was with you. Um, you guys did a wonderful job of that sustained attention. That was a lot of writing, and I know your hands hurt, um, but you should be really proud of yourself because I am super proud of you. All right, so today you are going to be writing your second paragraph. This one is called body paragraph number one. So if we look at this right here, um, and we're looking here. Yesterday, you guys did your introduction paragraph where you summarized flowers for Algernon. And remember, we are trying to answer the question, should Charlie Gordon be operated on for scientific purposes? Today, your job is to do body paragraph number one. And this says you need to give information, which is to teach and explain about IQ. Because remember, the whole operation was to triple Charlie Gordon's intelligence. He had a below average intelligence of 68. They were going to triple it to 204, which made him a certified genius. But when you're writing, I want you to pretend that you're writing to like my second and fourth grader. They know about like somebody being intelligence, but they have intelligent, but they have no idea what IQ means. And it's your job to make sure that you explain it. So this is what you guys did yesterday. And today, you're gonna to be doing this. This one says, based on the information that you learned from our pre-reading activity about IQ, multiple intelligences, etc., write about this and explain how it relates to Charlie's experience. Okay, so if I go back to this, um, we're gonna go all the way down in Schoology to our Flowers for Algernon folder. Remember, mine looks a little bit different because I have like teacher view. But we're gonna go into our Flowers for Algernon um, folder. A couple of things I want to point out. Number one, where this says FFA introduction paragraph. That is our paragraph that we wrote yesterday. Here it is. So if you did not get that whole entire thing copied down into your, um, uh, what's it called, packet, that's your job to do first before moving on to that second paragraph. Okay. Um, but going back here, you're going to say, oh my gosh, Miss Mormon, thank you so much. But I'm only helping you a little bit. Right here, it says pre-reading activity. This is the activity that you guys were expected to do before we started reading Flowers for Algernon, okay? This is when you watched a video, you read a couple of articles, you took your own multiple intelligence test. Now, if you did not do that, you did not finish it, you didn't start it, you didn't do any of the, those things, you're behind. You're, that's something that you're gonna have to do on your own. However, um, for sake of time, I've also added in the answers. Now, those of you who did all the hard work are probably going, what the heck, Miss Mormon? That's not fair. I did all of that work, and you're just giving them the answers. Well, I'm giving them the answers that are filled in, but they don't have the background knowledge that you have, right? And if they just use the information that is filled in, they're not going to have a solid paragraph, and it'll affect them in some other way. So hopefully you guys will all take the time um, to work on that. So if I click on this pre-reading activity answers, it'll bring me to this. So hopefully this is going, oh yeah, Miss Mormon, I remember doing this. So we had the main menu. This is when you had to look at those ink blots and decide what you thought it looked like. I feel like that looks like a volcano. Anybody else see that? Uh, maybe I'm just the weirdo. I don't know. All right. Then it, we watched a YouTube video. And I know for some of you, this one didn't work. So this will be good information for you, but it's filled in about why we use this. Remember, the Rorschach testing is not something that is valid. We don't use it anymore, um, or very rarely, I should say. All right, then you opened up this article right here um, to learn a little bit about, more about IQ testing. So here's some answers. What does IQ stand for? Intelligence quotient. Who created the first IQ test? Alfred Binet. Why was the first IQ test created? It says, after the French government passed laws requiring all children attend school, they wanted a way to determine which students would have the most difficulty, which if we use our inferencing skills, this is saying that like before the 1900s, school wasn't required for people. What? Um, true or false? The creator of the IQ test believed intelligence stays the same over time and is not influenced by many factors. This is obviously false in that a lot of like the environment that you are in, the education that you have will, uh, <coughs> excuse me, help to either raise or lower your IQ. Um, what are the four areas of intelligence um, that the WAIS IV scores? And remember that, um, just all those letters is the test. That's what they called it. 
It scores verbal comprehension. So when somebody is talking, can you comprehend? Can you understand what is happening, um, what they are saying? Perceptional reasoning. So kind of like walking into a place and watching what is happening. Can you be? Can you understand what is happening in the environment? Um, working memory, being able to listen to, let's say, like a lecture of some sort or this video. Are you remembering what is going on? And processing speed. Not all of us take in information in the same speed. Some of us might need to be told three, four times before it sinks in. Others go, oh, I got it after the first time. Um, and that's totally normal. And last is what is the average IQ? We should know this. It's 100. And remember that Charlie's IQ was 68 before the operation. Then we've got a timeline. So thousands of years ago, interest in intelligence began. So people actually cared about intelligence before we had a rhyme or reason or testing or research or anything about it. People knew that there were discrepancies between um, people's intelligence. Early 1900s, this is when the French government asks Binet to help decide which students are likely to struggle. And that's when he starts to um, think about like publishing or creating this IQ test. 1916, Standard Binet Intelligence Scale is published, so he calls it um, after himself. 1917, Robert, and I want, I'm going to butcher his name, Yerkes or Yerkes, develops two tests for the U.S. Army, the Alpha and the Beta tests. And then by 1955, the WAISIV, which is now what we know as the IQ test, intelligence test is published. So we're learning some new information. Um, the rest of this is you took a multiple intelligence tests. We learned a little bit about science fiction, because remember, Flowers for Algernon is not a real story. All right, so hopefully, um, after going through yesterday and modeling how we brainstorm first, like what do we want in our paragraph, and then taking that information and writing a paragraph, hopefully you saw that, oh, that's something that I should do as well. Because I guarantee you, if you're writing in pencil on your, or even pen in your packet, and you go, oh, I forgot something, you're not gonna wanna erase and cross out and do all of those things, because I know some of you are perfectionists, and you'll go, oh, I just wanna start over. So it's really, really good to come up with some brainstormed ideas about where you want your paragraph to take you. All right. So I'm going to say, uh, let's see here, IQ is intelligence quotient. I want to talk about Alfred, actually the first thing I want to talk about, like French, uh, let's say early 1900s, Alfred, uh, the French government passed laws that children were required to attend school. Um, the French government asks Alfred Binet to um, develop a test to determine, oh, I like that predictive test, text, to determine um, which children may struggle. Um, we can write about average IQ is 100. We can talk about the army develops their own um, own tests. Those are called the alpha and beta. Um, and I'm just taking information off of the answers that I gave you. FYI, you should have more. You should have information from the ar ar actual article. But if I um, gave you all of that information, I'd just be doing the work for you. And that's not very fun. So I know you might like that, but I wouldn't. All right, what else can we talk about? We can talk about, um, oh, the last thing I really should make sure is that um, explain how IQ relates to Charlie's experience. Because remember, um, this paper is not just about explaining IQ, we're also making sure that we relate it back to what actually happened to Charlie Gordon and prove, argue and prove, determine, should Charlie have had this experiment for scientific purposes in the first place? Okay, so that is it. So your job is to, today, number one, make sure that you have finished the Flowers for Algernon introduction paragraph in your packet. Remember, that should be written right here. 
Second, you are going to be going into our pre-reading activity. You can look at your own answers and you can look at my answers. Remember, it should be a combination of both. They should not just be from um, the answers that I gave you. Um, you're going to, if you want to do it on your, um, in the margins right here, um, to write your notes, you are more than welcome to, or if you want to get out a separate paper or you want to open up a Google Doc like I did, your choice. Um, but quick brainstorm chronologically, like what do you want to put into your paragraph? And then last, you are going to go ahead and write that body paragraph. So um, tomorrow, or not tomorrow, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. On Monday, when you guys get back, the expectation is that your introduction paragraph that we did yesterday is complete and this body paragraph number one is complete. Um, and that's it. Happy writing.